Hey gang, welcome to the channel. This is the Blue Eddy AC200L. This is replacing essentially the Blue Eddy AC200 Max. And today I'm just gonna quickly kind of compare what the upgrades to this are and what we're missing versus the, the, the AC200 Max that might be a pretty big deal. Now, power station reviews are getting to be a little bit lengthy and pretty boring, so I'm not gonna go over every single aspect and deep dive into every single detail. I wanna give you my personal opinion because I have used this thing for about the last month and a half, and you might've seen me use this on some of my other camping videos on my main channel, and I've used this to power my RV, which I made a video on on my other channel using this power station. So I just kinda wanna go over why I like it and some of the things that kinda leave me scratching my head why did Blue Eddy do on this power station? But the high level points of this power station are it has got a 2400 watt pure sign inverter. That is going to power most anything that you need around the house. For RV usage, if you have a big 13.5 or 15K BTU AC, it probably won't start it. But anything else, it'll probably work just fine. You can put 1200 watts worth of solar up to 147 volts. So that, that makes it easier to configure your solar panels if you have a lot of them. You can hook them in series, which is a lot cheaper to do cabling wise, and it's just easier to do because it requires less cabling to get up to 147 volts, which will get you, if you're careful about it, up to 1200 watts worth of input of solar in this. You can charge it via AC anywhere between 800 watts, 1200 watts, or what they call turbo mode, up to 2400 watts or 20 amps. And there's a caveat to that, and I'll get to it but you can charge this thing with immense power to get it topped off really, really quick if you choose the right configuration. Part of what comes with this system is pretty typical with all Blue Eddy stuff, but they, they've kind of changed some of the, the connection ports. So you're gonna get your MC4 solar cable connections, but this is going to be an XT90 connection. You're gonna get a cigarette style 12 volt plug to an XT90 male but you're gonna have to use what they also send you, an XT90 female to this aviation port. And you connect these two together. And then this plugs into your power station. This plugs into your vehicle to charge while you're on the go. Now these aviation ports you're gonna see a lot of, and this power station utilizes aviation ports on the side. That's what's gonna be all of your inputs. So you got your AC input, with a, which is an aviation port. You've got your DC solar input, which is an aviation port. And then over here, this is gonna be your expansion port. So this is expandable. You can use the B300, you can use the B230, or you can use the brand new, not yet released, B210 expansion battery and get up to almost 9,000 watt hours off of this unit. So it is pretty configurable if you wanna you know, buy this main unit and then go buy expansion batteries to tie into it. But the fact that they, well, let's go back to the AC charging cord. This is the AC charging cord, which is another upgrade from the AC200 Max. The AC200 Max had that giant loud brick that only input 500 watts into the AC200 Max. This has no power brick, you only have a charging cord. And again, almost up to 2400 watts. But the AC charging cord uses, again, this aviation socket that you have to plug into the back. I think this is one of the downfalls of this power station because if you lose this guy, if you leave it on the side of your truck, out camping and you forget to bring it home with you, you can't just go to Walmart and get a standard you know, cable, three prong cable to charge this thing up. These are gonna be pretty hard to find and you probably have to get directly through Blue Eddy, this aviation port to plug into the side. So that's, I, I, I'm sure there's some reasoning behind it with it being able to get up to 2400 watts, but I just wish they would have used a regular AC cord. But that, th these are the cords that it comes with. And of course you get your little back. So let's talk about the capacity of this unit. And what I mean by that is Blue Eddy rates this at 2,048 watt hours, but how much of that can you actually get out of this battery in use? So I did an AC discharge test using an appliance here at home, and I was able to get out of this unit on the AC discharge side of things, 1,835 watt hours. That equates to 90, 91-ish percent efficient. That is fantastic from the AC side of things compared to all other power stations that I have reviewed. 
I did a DC discharge test on it and it didn't fare quite as well. I was able to pull out on my DC discharge test 1,688 watt hours, which equates to around 83% efficient. If you take the median of the DC and the AC, you're around 86.5% efficient overall as a whole. But I think if you're gonna be using these big power stations with the big inverter capabilities of it, you're going to be using the AC side of this power station. And again, 90%, fantastic. To test the AC inverter efficiency on this unit or what some people call the parasitic drain, vampire draw, whatever you wanna call it, um, I wanted to see how much power this inverter actually used on this power station. So to do that, I charged this up to 100%. I turned on the AC inverter. I did not plug any type of load into it. I let it run for 18 hours. When I came back, it was at 91%. That is half a percent an hour. That is phenomenal. That is extremely efficient for an inverter of this size. So if you do accidentally leave this inverter on, it's not gonna drain your battery overnight. There is settings in the app where you can go in and turn off the AC inverter after say four hours or 10 hours, whatever you choose, but half a percent an hour for a 2400 watt inverter is great. So the goods up front, all the ports that you're gonna be able to utilize are just a hair different than the AC200 Max. You are gonna get your four 20 amp AC outputs. You do have what they're calling a 30 amp RV output. It's not necessarily or truly a 30 amp because this is only a 2400 watt inverter, but you can plug in your standard 30 amp RV cord up here. And I did that on my main channel and I powered up my RV. Of course, I didn't run the AC unit, but this works just fine. Now for the DC side of things in terms of outputs, this is where it gets a little funky, okay? So you're gonna get two USB type C 100 watt power delivery outputs, and you got two USB-A quick charge DC outputs. Now you got your standard 10 amp 12 volt cigarette style port. Now this is where I think it gets a little bit funky because on the AC200 Max, they had the 30 amp 12 volt output, which is fantastic for camper vans and RVs and people that need a high output on DC side. This one, they give you a 48 volt, eight amp output. Okay, this might be fantastic. Who knows because they haven't released the, the cable that is required to use that. It is called, I believe the D40 cable and it is not yet available to the public. So I can't even test that. I don't know how it's gonna work. I don't know if that cable is gonna have some kind of step down converter to 12 volt. I don't know. If it does, it's gonna be great, but I've been saying for months and months and months, I want my power stations to have high amperage DC outputs. So you can run things like a diesel heater that won't run off of this 12 volt style socket. Most diesel heaters take around 15 amps at startup. So these don't work. This would be fantastic. But who knows how it's actually gonna work because the cable is not yet available to us to test out. So I hope it works well, but as for right now, I don't know. Um, I am waiting on that cable. Now, unfortunately it is an add-on and you gotta go buy that cable. I wish they would have included it. Well, I really wish they would have released this power station with the D40 cable that we need to use what's on the front of this power station. And then I showed you guys the side, but that's where all the inputs for charging are gonna be. And you do have a circuit breaker switch here and you can, it does come with a grounding screw if you do want to actually ground this unit. So now let me show you what another quirky thing about this unit. If you go into the Blue Eddy app, we're gonna go into the AC200L. And I personally like Blue Eddy's apps. I think they're very easy to, to figure out and they just give you the, the most important information that you need, your incoming watts, your outcoming watts. Uh, you can turn on and off the AC side of things and the DC side directly from your app. So once you get to the screen, you can click on charging mode and you'll see you've got standard, silent, and turbo. And standard is going to give you around 1200 grid power juice, or if you have it plugged into a generator, around 1200 watts inputting into this power station. If you go into silent, it's gonna be around 800 watts. Turbo is going to give you around 1400, 1450 watts. But remember I said you could charge this thing up to 2400 watts and you can, but there is a big caveat to that. So get out of this and you'll have to go into the advanced settings. And right here it says max charging current of grid. If you click on that right now, it's set for 12 amps. You can change this, but you have to go into pro mode. Once you click pro mode, you've got to input a password. Blue Eddy doesn't give you a password, so you have to contact Blue Eddy to get a password to enable up to 20 amps worth of charging in this. I'm guessing they did that because most home outlets, most typical homes only have 15 amp wall outlets and you cannot push 2400 watts out of those outlets or you'll, it's, it's not safe. You could create a fire, you know, that your home wiring might not be 
good enough to support 2400 watts. A lot of people don't have 20 amp outputs at their home. So I can understand probably just by safety concerns why they are doing this. However, I'm a grown man. If I know that I have 20 amps, I want to be able to pull 20 amps out of my wall and know the dangers of that if I want to do it. But instead, you have to get a passcode directly from Blue Eddy to enable that 12 amp charging current to be updated to up to 20 amps. So you can charge at 20 amps. However, you have to get Blue Eddy's permission and a password to do that. So there's that. So you can still get 2400 watts if you get 1200 watts of solar on an absolutely perfect day and you're charging via a generator or an AC wall outlet at 1200 watts. You can get 2400 watts total input into this using solar and grid power. This does prioritize solar. So if you have solar hooked up as well as your wall outlet plugged into this to charge it, this is gonna prioritize solar. So it's gonna take however much solar it can from whatever panels you're using outside, give you the maximum input of solar juice, and then supplement that with your AC grid to input as much charging current in this as you have selected in the charging speed, whether it's silent, turbo, or standard. But this is always going to prioritize solar input over grid input to obviously utilize your solar panels more so than grid power. So that's the broad overview of this power station. Yes, I do like it. Yes, I have used it multiple times out camping. And yes, it has given me everything that I've asked for it to, including brewing my coffee in the morning, which is the most important thing in my opinion. There's just a few quirks about this thing that, uh, you know, I, I can't even comment on yet, mainly that high amperage DC output. I wish I had the cable to, to see how it works because that's something that I really, really need for my setup with my diesel heater. Um, hopefully in the future, in a few weeks, I think that thing's supposed to be released. So we'll test it out and see how it works. But um, overall, it's, it's, it's a good power station. It also does not come like the AC200 Max. It does not have any wireless charging pads up top. So they did take that out of the equation on this one. I don't know how many of you use that. I actually did use it. I have a little MagSafe charging case on my phone and I love being able to just plop that thing down on top and it starts charging up my phone, which means I don't have to plug in a charging cord to one of these USB outputs and take up space. Cause I do use these to charge up my, my drone batteries, my camera batteries, some of my lights that I use at night. I use a lot of these ports and now I've got to use a phone cord taking up one of those ports if I want to charge my phone. So I do miss, I do miss the, uh, the wireless charging pad. Now I'm just going to hook up a heater and we're going to test the voltage and the sine wave. All of my Blue Eddy products have done phenomenally well in the sine wave category and the voltage category. But just to show you folks that this is the same way, let's get that taken care of. So get the AC cut on. Max. I believe. Yeah. Max. And we're at uh, 1300, 1450 watts, 1500 watts. Okay, fair enough. Now let's see what she puts out for us. Ooh, that sounded bad. I always do that. All right, 120 volts. Let's check the sign. Absolutely perfectly clean sine wave. So you can hook this thing up to sensitive electronics, LED TVs, computers, whatever you want, and you're gonna be fine. So just like I said, all Blue Eddy products have done extremely well in the voltage and sine wave category. So I think this one's a pass as well. Okay, and this unit is does work as a UPS mode. It's got a 20 millisecond cutover time, which can be fast enough for most computers. However, I wouldn't consider that an extremely fast UPS, so just be careful if you're gonna hook up one of your sensitive computers and, and hope that it does cut over in the event of a power loss. But to demonstrate the UPS, which is easier to see on these incandescent lights, I got my light array plugged in. Over here on the side, hopefully you can see, it is plugged into my wall over there. So this light is being powered through my AC grid. The power is coming from my grid, bypassing this battery and running these lights. So to kind of show you guys how fast this switchover is, I'm gonna unplug my grid and watch the flicker of those lights. And in three, two, one. Hardly a flicker. So this does have a pretty fast UPS mode um, for you folks that are gonna be using this to keep sensitive uh, computer equipment running. Um, just be careful, uh, 20 milliseconds is quick, but it might not be 
quick enough for some of your computers. But for things like fish aquariums, keeping that pump running, absolutely fine. So while we're here, <laughs> let's just see. I mean, 2,400 watts, that's a lot of juice. But right now we're running 360 watts. I'm gonna plug this space heater back in. That's gonna push us up to, that's 2,000, that's 2,100 watts. We'll go get another heater. All right, here's a 500 watt space heater, which this should get us right at or above the continuous rated 2,400 watts. Let's see how it reacts. Twenty two hundred. Okay, that's right at around twenty three hundred watts. And I'm going to put my mic. You probably can hear the heaters, but this power station is dead quiet. And we're at twenty three hundred and forty watts right now. And I cannot hear. Again, you're hearing this. You're not hearing the power station. All right, I'm gonna clear all this stuff away so I can actually move around, but it's running all of this stuff just fine. Okay, the fans are on on this now. I just unplugged everything. It is whisper quiet. It probably sounds louder given the fact my microphone is right here on the vent, but just, abs just dead quiet. So gang, that's why I have been using this 200L. Um, it's, it's, it, these things are workhorse, in my opinion, my opinion only, these things are built like a tank. I love Blue Betty products. There's a few quirks on this thing though, that if I was the lead design engineer, I would have done way differently, including the AC input cord. I don't know, again, I'm not an electrical engineer, so I don't know if they had to use this style due to the high amperage that, that it can handle. I don't know. I could be completely wrong on that, but I would have just used a standard input cable in the event that this thing gets lost. I, I, that, that, this does concern me a little bit. And this 48 volt high DC output, I don't know how that's going to react. I don't know how that's going to be. I hope it works well because I really need it. But until that D40 cable is released, um, I kind of missed that 30 amp 12 volt on the AC200 Max because it was just simple. It just worked. But everything else on this unit, you know, it, it, should, it works for me. It might not work in your application, but I've enjoyed this 200L. But you know, it's, it's Blue Eddy. Some people love them, some people hate them. You can find things about every single power station company, bad things about them, EcoFlow, Jackery, whatever. Um, I prefer Blue Eddy products and I think they work very well. That's why I use them regularly. And this one just performs well. That's all I can say. Blue Eddy does not pay me if you buy this. I don't get a cent from Blue Eddy. They do give me discount codes to give you, but that's on your, that's on your dime. I don't get any, any contribution if you go buy these. And I made that very clear to all of you folks and to Blue Eddy that I don't want any money because I think that makes my opinion of these things skewed just a little bit if you think I'm getting a kickback if you go buy this. And I want to assure you that I am not getting anything from this company in terms of monetary compensation. So that's why I wanted to show you this 200, and it does weigh about 60 pounds. It is not light. Me just trying to scoot this thing around is, uh, it, it's heavy. So gang, if you have any questions about this unit, shoot me a comment and I will get back to you. Um, I have used this regularly, so I, I do have experience out in the field with this power station. And again, it's worked perfectly for me. It's ran my RV with this, powered up my microwave just fine. It, it's worked, that's all I'm gonna say. So gang, AC200L, I will leave a link down below in the description. I'm gonna try to get the discount code from Blue Eddy so I can add that too. Uh, I don't know how much it's gonna be, but um, I should be able to put that down in the video description below just to give you, save you a little bit of bucks if you wanna buy something like this. So, so gang, thanks for watching and uh, we will see you soon. Take care.